So it is 1.30 in the afternoon at Westlake High School. Well, it's 1.30 in the afternoon everywhere in Central Center time, but um, <laughs> nonetheless. So this topic is on note taking. And if you are just tuning in, I just want to let you know um, this is myself, uh, Lisa Johnson, and Mr. Hansen is kind of monitoring the back channel and then also just making sure that um, the deck looks good and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to kind of walk you through a kind of lengthened version or expanded version of what we shared with freshmen, uh, I guess, three or four weeks ago now is something that we did with kind of all note taking and study skills. So we're going to kind of dig a little bit deeper into that. Before I do that, again, I just wanted to kind of let you know who we are. I'm Ms. Johnson. Mr. Hansen, again, is running the back channel. And it's uh, WHS EdTech at EansISC.net if you want to. It's kind of like a joint email. You can contact both of us and ask us questions and things like that. Uh, Chris Hansen will actually be doing next week's. And I believe that is on, um, not study skill, sorry, uh, common sense media. There's a glare on my board. So, and then he'll be talking a little bit more about some of the things that we addressed when we um, met with students last week and kind of digging a little bit deeper into what those resources are. So, I, and slides are good. Everybody can see them. Excellent. So, what I think is really important is to always start with the why. If you've ever read anything by Simon Sinek or, um, checked out his TED talk. It's it's awesome. And I think it's important to kind of start with the why before just kind of you know, deploying a bunch of information. So I kind of want to start with the why, which is research. And I'm, I'm kind of a, I don't know, I'm a research junkie. I like research. I think it's important. And what was really interesting is when we shared this information with our students, they kind of perk up too when you share these sort of things, because it's it's one of those things to say, oh, you should be doing things this way because, you know, I told you so or because this is the best way or whatever. But, you know, when you offer them, you know, some sound research, that's kind of helpful. So on the upper left-hand side, there was a, a research study, and this one actually is a little bit older, but it was kind of interesting to take a look at, you know, kind of the, the information from it. So the research study basically said that 40% of students, and this is college students, fail to capture main points in a typical lecture. And first year students capture only 11%. So it was that kind of thing, if, if college students are struggling with something like this, then it may make sense to start offering some of these tools and some of these tips to our current students. That way, you know, whatever they do, they'll be in a good spot. Something else that was really fascinating to me, um, and you can see it with the little icon, is the note taking being as mentally demanding as chess for an expert. And if you're interested in any of these research studies or, or where I'm getting all of this, you know, articles from, there'll be a kind of a bibliography at the back of this and we'll also share it out. So the whole research study, I believe that one was done in 1990, might have even been later in 2000. But the idea was that note taking, you know, requires retrieval of knowledge, requires planning, requires development of solutions and all of these sort of things. So it is very mentally demanding. It's not supposed to be easy. And something else we shared with students is that 29%. So there was a study about the power of doodle. I think it was actually published in the Wall Street Journal. And it talked about, the study was that basically recall. So when people were essentially, you know, listening to people's names be read, and then they were doodling at the same time, they had 29% better recall of that information. And something else that I thought was really interesting is there's a whole study about, you know, highlighting and underlining, and the idea of highlighting and underlining not being, they're, they're ineffective strategies in and of themselves. It's not to say that those are bad strategies, it's just in and of themselves, those are not effective strategies. And then something else, I, I found this one, this one's a very um, recent kind of post. And what was really interesting, and, and this is important, we kind of tried to stress to students is, you don't really want to use somebody else's notes. You know, you really, the whole point of good note taking is, it's something that you're going to basically have to kind of formulate and figure out what's important, what's not important, what you know, what you don't know, things like that. So there was a research study that um, talked about how students had to, and actually this was done in a college level. So at the college level, a lot of times they're given, you know, PowerPoints of slides or things like that. And students just kind of take notes on that rather than kind of restructuring the notes. So there was a study done that essentially what happened was 
if they restructured the notes, then there were actually this group of students that restructured the notes, they ended up doing 72% better, or they got 72% of the correct questions, and then the group that didn't got 61% correct. So it's the idea of when you're making meaning of that and organizing it for yourself, and then you can kind of see the process that they did. So I'm, I'm front loading you with this information like I did with students because I think it's important to know kind of where I'm headed with some of the things I'm gonna share out with you today. So the, the last little you know, pieces of information I thought were interesting and was essentially good note takers um, have better performance on immediate and delayed tests of recall and synthesis. So essentially, you know, if you're taking good notes, yeah, you'll probably do great on, you know, this week's exams or, or whatever, but you're going to do better on, you know, semester exams and things like that. The other thing is there was a study that talked about good note takers end up being better problem solvers, better decision makers, and work better with others. Now, Please know before I get any further into this, I'm not saying that we need to, you know, raise a crop of people who just, you know, dictate notes and, and write notes. It's not at all what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that there, in any job that I've ever had, um, and I have, you know, I've gone through my, you know, four years of college as well as my master's degree and then, you know, worked in a variety of different jobs, there's never been a job or a time where I didn't have to take notes in some form or format, whether it be, you know, agenda notes, whether it be going to professional development, whether it be in a meeting, you know, things like that. So there's always a time frame for, you know, being able to kind of synthesize information. That's really what I'm getting at with this. So what we did, and this is similar, um, if you didn't watch the previous webinar, then you'll get to see um, kind of we did something very similar with this. So we sent out a Google form to all of our staff. We had about half of our staff respond and this is the data from our staff and the reason we wanted to do that was I wanted to share with students what you know what they're going to be looking at. Now granted we were only talking to freshmen at this time but we wanted to make sure that they had a good feel for what was coming down the line. So how often do students take notes of some form or format? You can see from this data that Yes, students may not take notes every day in every class, but students take notes almost every day. So teaching them how to take good notes seemed like something that was important, obviously for the future, you know, in college, career, you know, whatever, but also today. The next piece of data we looked at was, and this is again, these are just from um, our high school teachers here. Um, what, what are students taking notes from? So the vast majority, you know, students are taking notes from lectures or slide decks, videos, labs, reading, things like that. Um, I also asked some college students the same question, and many of them said lecture, slide deck, and reading. So I think we're kind of, you know, in the same sort of um, space as that. This other question, and I really wanted to make sure that y'all were aware that these resources are out there, is the question, do you offer a video of your notes or lesson? So you'll see that um, a quarter of our teachers actually offer video notes and, and lessons almost all the time. A lot of those are our math and science teachers, and it's just a matter of asking, you know, and, and we kind of stress this with you know our students to make sure that they knew that these resources are available. Not everybody does because not all of them are, are that kind of lecture base, but to know that they, that is even a possibility that it's available for them. The other question we asked is, and we again we asked um, our staff this is when students are in your class, what types of notes are you encouraging? So on the top, you have a Cornell note. Um, the second one is a mind map. The third one is an outline. The fourth one is a chart. And the fifth one is a, a fill in the blank sort of note. So that's, that's kind of all of the research. And again, I, I gave you kind of a, an elongated version of that because I wanted you to see a little bit more of the information. And I kind of updated some of the things since I sent you know, that information out to our freshmen and then we talked about it. So the next piece is kind of the how, like, okay, now that I know that note taking in some form or format is important, what do I do about it? So that's really what I wanted to get into. Now, I'm sure that that's a great question. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to hold, I'm going to ask this question just so you know that I'm kind of thinking about it as I'm going through that. Um, do you have any research on note taking um, and kids with dysgraphia? So I will tell you, um, I have an eight year old who it's, it's either dysgraphia or dyslexia and we're still kind of working out some of those things. So I can give you 
some ideas for that. Um, and I can also, if I don't have them during this webinar, what I'll do is I'll meet with some of our LSSPs and, and make sure that I can kind of also share some of those resources. So these four note styles, some of the students knew about them, some of them didn't. And I really wanted to introduce them to them now. And because I think it's important, you know, some of these things they don't even see until college. And honestly, nobody taught me how to, you know, take notes. Fortunately, I was a very type A, very OCD perfectionist kid. So, you know, I, I was able to kind of do that, but there are a lot of people who, you know, kind of flop and flounder because they don't have that, you know, kind of guidance instructions. So we're really trying to share that with them. So I'm going to go through some basics. And again, I found a lot of this information through research, um, through looking at what community colleges and colleges and universities are sharing out as best practices for their own students. So Cornell notes, um, I, I'm sure I can't do like a raise of hands, how many of you have done Cornell notes, but I, I imagine that, you know, this is probably one of the most common. So, and, and a lot of our students had seen these. So on the left-hand column, um, sorry, on the right-hand column, you have notes, which is basically you're taking notes. And on the um, bottom, then you summarize your notes, which actually gets back to that research study that I mentioned about college students and, and how when they do that, they end up doing a lot better on exams and just, you know, remembering things and understanding things. And then on the um, left-hand side is the cues. And what's great about this, and those cues are just, you know, ways to remember what you've written. So easy to record and review these notes. It's easy to pull out major concepts and ideas. And because you're already building in the cues and summary, kind of getting back to that research study I shared with you earlier, you're already processing the info before you're even studying it. So that's, that's a great sort of tool to teach students how to do. The next one is an outline, and I am sure that everybody on this webinar has done some sort, and, and watching it later, has done an outline. It's, you know, it's everybody's, it's a very simple sort of thing. So the cool thing about outlines is they're very well organized. So, you know, you have your topic, you know, and then you might have a subtopic, subtopic, you know, and then kind of indent, indent. Uh, you're recording relationships and content, so there's a very obvious hierarchy. Now, the thing to think about is if kids are taking digital notes, these are really easy to record digitally because you're just indenting and then, you know, kind of moving things back and forth and bulleting. So that's very easy to do digitally. It's, it's not that you can't do it, you know, in kind of analog, but it just takes a little bit more, you know, kind of paying attention to how you're organizing your notes. And then every time I'm showing you the italicized, this part is just things to think about. So if a student is doing an outline note, Odds are this is going to require more thought because you have to think about how things fall, you know, as you're taking. You have to figure out, okay, well, that actually goes underneath this and this, under, you know, goes underneath. And if a lecture is very fast-paced or if the class is very fast-paced, this may not always work for them. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, the next one's a chart. And really what we were trying to introduce students to was we want to talk to you about what each one of these is and when it might make sense to use one over the other and just start kind of playing with them now. And so a chart, this would be best if you wanted to do easy compare contrast or you're dealing with the same amount of information. Um, it helps pull out relevant info. So I'll give you an example. So let's say that I'm in a social studies classroom and you know one column is gonna be uh, major dates the next column might be um, major events, and then it might be, you know, major players within that event, and, you know, so on and so forth. So basically, you're, you're, you know, you're writing down the same information in each row, um, just, you know, kind of as those columns. So it's an easy way. If you know facts, if you know the lecture or the information is going to be about facts and relationships, then it's a very easy way to organize it. Same thing in the English classroom. If you're reading a book and, you know, you have the character and then maybe a quote and then maybe, um, you know, characteristics of that and so on and so forth. It's a, it's a very easy, you just keep doing it, repeat, repeat, rinse and repeat. So you do have to kind of know the content in the lecture prior to that. So you need to know that it would be in a chart format. The next one is a mind map, um, and I'll tell you from my personal experience, this one has been the one that I, I kind of gravitate to, and, and some of our students do too. It's kind of interesting. I see, I see mostly outline notes for the most part um, as I'm kind of walking through and seeing things, but I do see some mind map, um, especially in, you know, some of your science classes or social studies, depending on how they're organizing things. So this maximizes your active participation. You know, you can see relationships can be very easily seen. It's, it's very obvious to see
see where things fit because of the how you're connecting them. It's also easy to color code these, so that might be helpful for students with dysgraphia because it's just very easy to kind of move things around. Um, and then you can easily um, edit the notes too. So like with an outline, sometimes you don't have space to kind of like crunch something in, whereas in a mind map, you can just kind of put it over here and then draw a line, so it makes it a little bit easier. So that's something to keep in mind. So I went through these briefly with students just to give them kind of a heads up. And then I also wanted to, and again, these are a few things that I didn't quite add with it, but I wanted to make sure that you had awareness of. So this, I'm gonna just show you right here. So this is a book you can buy on Amazon, but he actually has it available on his website for free. It's a free um, download, so you can get it. Our, I want to say juniors or seniors, I can't remember which ones take our psychology class, um, but our psychology class actually worked through this in a jigsaw and did some projects on this. So if you have um, you know, Mr. Rayo for psychology then, or if your student has <laughs> Mr. I know you're not auditing those courses, but uh, if your students have them, then you can kind of ask them if they remember this. But the book is called 10 Steps to Earning Awesome Grades While Studying Less, and it's got some great chapters. It's actually got some really great stuff. He is the person, I think he runs College Info Geek or something, and so he's got all these YouTube videos, and it's actually had some really good research and, and practical advice, so I thought that was a, a good resource to kind of check out. And so I'm gonna kind of transfer because there really are two different types of, of sort of notes. And I wanted to talk not only about note taking, you know, if I'm sitting in a classroom doing a lecture, but I wanted to talk about everything else because this is so, so important in this day and age. You know, we don't have binders in the sense, I mean, not really. We don't have binders in the sense where, you know, kids get here and we show them exactly where to put, you know, each, you know, brad or each, you know, tab and, and organize it and they can physically and tangibly touch all the papers. Some classes do, some classes don't, but that's, you know, that's not really a standard anymore. And so we have kind of a, a digital repository for things and we have digital binders. And so I think it's important for students who are maybe not as naturally inclined to be organized or even students who are organized to kind of be thinking about this and, and definitely be thinking about this now versus, you know, when you can't find anything even through, you know, quick digital search. So one of the things that this book talks about is having some sort of structured digital organization for quick capture. So, hey, I have an idea. Where does that go? You know, hey, um, I found an article or a book I want to read. Where does that go? Hey, I have a task, you know, that needs to be done later. Where does that go? Hey, there's an event you need to attend. Where does that go? Um, hey, I have a list of items, you know, I need to bring to school tomorrow. Where does that go? And I'm not by any means saying this all has to be digital, um, but they need to be thinking about that. And then, you know, hey, where do all my notes from school go? Where do all my papers go? I will tell you before I get into this kind of part, which is a little bit more digital than what I've been sharing with you, um, I wanted to tell you two things I thought were really interesting. So our uh, academic interventionist was also there and he shared some study tips and things like that before I kind of get into the note taking part. And he brought about, I don't know, 200 some odd planners. And what was really interesting is the first period, we just had them on a, you know, kind of on a box on the table. And we said, hey, if anybody wants one, come by and get them. And we had maybe two or three students who were like, eh, okay, I'll come and get it. Interestingly enough, I said, you know what, let's remove the barrier. I have a feeling that our students want them, but they don't want to actually ask for them or admit to wanting them. And so we just left them out on the tables for the next class periods. And interestingly enough, they were all gone. <laughs> so you probably have an academic planner at home. Um, you might if you have a freshman. And so that was really interesting to me. We asked them just as a show of hands, I said, even before they had, you know, we handed out the planners, I said, how many of you already have a planner and are using it? And this was probably end of September or mid-September. And about, I would say about 25% of them said, you know, I already have a planner, I'm already using it. What was really interesting is I then started talking to student council and I asked our juniors and seniors the same question and some of them, some of them do, some of them don't. I think it changes at that point where they kind of have a, a better kind of framework for organization and they can figure out what works and what doesn't. But interestingly enough, you know, quite a few of our freshmen were really interested in, in having planners and using them. The other question I asked was, how many of you take notes by hand? And I, I don't mean 
in the sense of, you know, typing notes. I mean, physically, you know, how many of you are taking notes by hand? And I would say 50 to 75% of our, again, this was just our freshmen during those groups, but we did talk to every freshman, um, still take notes by hand. And I, I think that's actually, I mean, if you've looked at some of the research and things like that, there's, there's a lot that goes with that. That's not a bad thing at all. In fact, it's a good thing. Um, I think there are certain things that make sense, you know, taking by hand. And I think the whole thing about, taking notes by hand versus taking them, um, typing them, is when you're taking things by hand, you can't possibly write down everything verbatim. And so you really are processing and making sense of things before you're just kind of, you know, kind of quick capture everything. So that's my little sidetrack for a moment. So now I'm gonna get into actual iPad tools for you. So I wanted to front load you with that information because really a lot of our students don't take notes on the iPad, not all of them, but you know, it's kind of important to meet them where they are and, and show them a variety of things. And I think the kind of the pendulum from analog, you know, digital, it just kind of depends on the student. It depends on, you know, the content area. It depends on what they're doing at the time and, and what's best for them. So with that being said, I do want to talk about tools. So what I told them and kind of you can see here in that slide, that quick capture, what I told them was this is my process. I said, this does not have to be your process, but I do want you to start thinking about how you're organizing your digital binder. It might look different, but you need to have a process and you need to start having a process now while you're a freshman and kind of fine tuning it. So you have, you know, this doesn't become a problem for you as you know, things start to get harder, or more fast paced. So again, this is just my own process. When I use the notes app on the iPad, I only use it for quick stuff. It does have, I told all of them, if you update to iOS 11, there's actually a scanner built into that. So they can scan documents and things like that. So that is a helpful tool. Notability um, is essentially what we bought for every secondary student. They have the app on their iPad. They can annotate PDFs. They can do multimedia notes. They can actually record lectures, which is awesome. And there is a Mac version of it. So if you know they wanted to, they could go get the Mac version and then they can just kind of keep everything seamless, especially if they're going on to you know, college with a few juniors and seniors. So on our YouTube channel, and I think Chris can actually post this in the link as well or in kind of the chat, but I did a quick video on Notability and it just highlights how to organize Notability as well as how to back it up. So the big thing I wanna stress with all of you is just to remind your students to back up to Google Drive because Notability is not a cloud-based app um, innately. And so it's not like I sign into Google Docs and you know it, everything's there again. It doesn't quite work that way because there's not a sign-in process to Notability. It has to be backed up to a third-party site. So you'll see in just a moment, and I'll, I'll show you with a screenshot, but basically, if they sign into Google Drive in Notability, and again, I'll show it to you in just a moment, then it'll auto back up all of their notes and it'll just create a folder in Google Drive that says Notability. Why is this important? Well, if they have their iPad stolen or it's missing or if they have to swap it out, all their Notability is gone. All of the notes that they've been taking are gone unless it's been backed up to Google Drive. So that's that's really the thing that I was trying to stress with them. Now, Google Docs, I think, is fantastic. I know in a lot of industries and colleges and things like that, you use it. So I, I think it's great. I typically use it if I'm doing some sort of collaborative work, like agendas, things like that. For papers, it's great because it's got lots of tools. The two things I mentioned to students were, at some point, again, especially if you have juniors and seniors, you're going to want to start sharing a lot of that with a personal Gmail account. That way, if you are there are things that you want, you know, to take with you or want to have access to later down the line, you'll have access to it. The other thing I tell them is, and I'm sure y'all are aware, that sometimes you don't know when you have Wi-Fi and, you know, when you don't have Wi-Fi. In the olden days, you know, I didn't have to worry about Wi-Fi with my binder and my papers and things like that, but now you do. So there is a way to make things offline in Google Docs, but you would have to know to do that beforehand. And so that's just something to keep in mind. Evernote, I, again, I, I wish I could do like a, hey, raise your hand if you use Evernote. I use Evernote quite a bit. I use it for notes. I do, you know, ideas, record lectures, things like that. It's, it's great for personal information um, and kind of you know, keeping everything organized. Um, I, I really, really like it a lot. The, I also like that it's cross-platform, just like Google Docs is. 
The one thing I did mention to students is um, it has OCR, which is optical character recognition. And essentially what that means is, and I'll show you here. So let's say that I had this sticker and it says I escaped on it. Um, if I had put a photo of this sticker or I had taken a picture of notes on the board or picture of written notes and I'd put it into my Evernote and then I wanted to do a search in Evernote, not only will it search typed notes, but it'll also search for words and images, thus the OCR, which is not a typical sort of thing. Um, the last thing, well, it isn't a typical thing now, who knows, it might be in everything in you know, three to five years, who knows, but that's for now, I have not seen it in every single tool that we have. So the Paper 53, the last one, um, again, all these apps are available for all of our students. And um, all of them are free, except for Notability. That's the one that costs money, but it's provided through self-service to all of our students. If students like to do some mind mapping or sketch noting, and I've seen you know, quite a few that enjoy that, Paper I-53 is fantastic. It actually has um, some graphic organizer backgrounds in it as well. So that's a fantastic tool. So those are the ones I kind of wanted to mention to you because I think those are kind of your, your baseline for you know, taking notes and organization and things like that. Now, I do want to show you this screenshot just so you can see, even though the, the full video is online, it's like six minutes. Um, but that Google Drive with that settings, if that settings is not there, then it's not being backed up to Google Drive, which means if the iPad is misplaced, stolen, lost, has to be you know swapped out, then the notability notes are gone, which is really devastating to some of our students because you know they do they take all they open up all the PDFs they take notes in them and they use them to study with and so it's it's really integral to have that so I just really wanted to make sure that you know y'all were aware of that okay so the last thing that I shared with students so again you know I kind of started out with the research talk to them about different types of notes, no matter whether they take notes digitally or you know, analog. And then I got into how they should organize or, or tips for thinking about how to organize things digitally. The very last thing we talked about is we kind of went back to the lecture because you know, there's a fair amount of you know, still lecturing. It's not like they're never gonna have any type of lecture ever. So I just gave them some quick tips. And these are some things you'll see in just a moment. So if they're taking notes by hand, which a good 50 to 75 percent of them were, then thinking about what system makes most sense. So, you know, if I'm in this lecture, well, then an outline may make more sense. Well, you know what, we're doing this in bio, mind mapping makes more sense. Listening for certain words, um, abbreviating, and keeping a record of questions. And I'm going to kind of dig a little deeper into this. So, what was really interesting to me is during note taking, 75% of this, and I can't remember what study this came from, it might have come from a different book, but 75% um, of that is really listening. And, and I paid a lot of attention to this as kind of my note-taking styles kind of shift a little bit more, and I'm, I'm really paying attention to not just writing things down verbatim, but really thinking about, you know, what's important and, and kind of that piece of it. So what was interesting, and, and I had all the teachers nodding, so I, I thought this was helpful, is these are just obvious phrases. And you know what? Did I lose my mic? Can you hear me? Still hear me? Sweet. Okay. Then I'll just leave it be. I don't know that I ever plugged it in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll just be like a prop. Um, so there's something like an interesting fact is the main idea here is the next topic, but now it's in my hand. I'll be fine. The next topic will be to sum up what's important here, significant. You know, these are important phrases, and it's, I know it seems obvious to us, but it's not always obvious to um, some of our students, so this was really helpful. You know, I said, if your teacher says this, odds are it's important. Write it down. If your teacher says to sum up, odds are it's important. And a lot of these things I started finding out of books that were designed for um, college students, so I, I think that's important to know that, you know, college students struggle with this. It's hard to believe that, you know, our own students would magically figure all of these things out. Some of them have, but not always. So the other thing I was looking at are these um, five pieces. One, giving examples. So if your teacher gives a lot of examples, odds are, you know, that's an important thing. If a teacher continually repeats what's being said, odds are it's important. If they spend more time on one section than another, odds are it's important. If they write something on the board, 
odds are it's important. And then, you know, body language, you know, facial expressions, are they, you know, getting more animated about something, you know, are they kind of pacing things, are they moving around, those things. And again, same thing with, you know, professors or just in meetings, any of these sort of things, these are great kind of skills to know. So that was the listening part. Now, this is going to be kind of hard to see here, but again, I'll, I'll give you a link to this. We actually printed these out for students. I did not design these because fortunately somebody had already done it online, so it saved me a lot of time. But these are just common abbreviations. And again, I know that these are things that adults know, but and, and some students will do these, but this was helpful to some students who just really the benefit of this is if they're writing things by hand, which many of them are, then you know, you're saving paper because you're not writing out a bunch of you know, generic words and you're also being able to capture more information and more important information because you're not writing everything out, again, that words that you know not necessarily important. So like decrease, you know, an increase and things like that. And then the last thing we kind of shared with them is once you're done, um, spend five minutes filling in the blanks. So, and I did, I, I said, I realized that you're going from class to class. So this may not happen um, between classes. I said, but at the end of the day, look at your notes. If you felt like something happened really quickly and, oh, I forgot to, you know, fill in the last part of that, fill it in that evening or after school, because if you wait two or three days, you will absolutely forget whatever it was that you were supposed to be remembering to put in there. And then the last thing is just explaining your notes out loud, which is a great study practice. So that's, that's kind of an elongated version of everything that we shared with students. These are all of my sources. Well, there's probably more of them, but these are kind of the top ones that I shared with you. And I'll make sure that these go out in the email as well. Um, I did want to just mention, because I talked to you about planners, so I just wanted to share a few of these. The Passion Planner on the left-hand side is, is my personal favorite. In fact, the 2017, 2018, so again, it's only like half the year you could use it now, but um, they're all on sale for 50% off right now. Um, I think today is actually the last day, but I, I noticed that when I was grabbing my screenshot. These medium plain ones, um, the one in the middle, are great if students just want um, regular paper and you know or want to take notes or you know kind of build in the calendar or something like that these are actually the one in the middle um have page numbers which is fantastic and i've actually seen quite a few students do something a little bit similar to that and then the one on the right and again by the way i know this the whole thing is for students but honestly like i've bought every single one of these so uh <laughs> if that's helpful to you as well in fact i've bought the one on the right hand side i've bought two of them now for my husband because he loves them so much and so the one on the right-hand side, um, the far right, is called the Behance Action Journal. And these are great because they're dot grids. You can see um, the pages are not thin, so you can actually write on both sides. And then you can see the action steps. So it's really great um, if you're working in groups or, you know, taking notes in such a way where you want to take all the notes, but then you want to have, like, five things you need to remember. I would just tell you now, I would buy, if you're going to buy any of these or even look at them, um, and this is just lessons learned on my part, um, the, the middle one you can buy off of Amazon, you know, it's got free shipping, all that. The Passion Planner I would buy from their site. Uh, and then the Action Journal I would actually buy from their site because it's more expensive on Amazon. And even though you pay the shipping, I end up buying like three at a time because I, I use them quite frequently. So <laughs> that's just a little bit of information for you. And then I just wanted to give you a few heads up on some things. So if you're not aware, Healthy Chaps, which is our counseling website, has amazing posts. They do them all the time. And I've started writing some posts for them. So there's one on benefits of journaling. You can check out um, how to organize your digital notebook. Kind of is, is a written you know, explanation of what I've kind of told you today. There's a study skills 101, which talks about what our academic intervention has shared with the freshmen. And then come, I believe next week, I'm talking to Ms. Cannon, who teaches Latin here, and she does some amazing stuff with studies, kind of being able to study vocabulary and some tips for students. So that one will actually come out soon. So definitely check those out. Those are all there for you. And uh, I just wanna make sure you are aware of those. The other thing I wanted to let you know, is on the left-hand side tomorrow, especially if you have any middle school students, I will be at uh, Hill Country Middle School tomorrow for their FIT Festival. So they do this awesome kind of PD for students and they get to choose which ones they wanna go to. And I'm gonna do one on bullet journaling and, and more of the analog kind of note-taking sort of process. So that'll actually be for middle schoolers. And then we're looking at 
in spring of 2018, taking a condensed version of this presentation that we shared with freshmen and starting to share it with eighth grade students as well, um, the note taking and kind of the organization and things like that. So I wanted to make sure that you knew that was on the radar. And I think that's it. So Mr. Hansen, were there any questions or um, everybody was good? Okay, so again, all of these, you'll have the archive version of this as well, and then we will share out any of the notes and research, and you can take a look at all of those things. And uh, apparently this is just a prop today because I did not plug it in. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for tuning in. I, I hope it was helpful for you, and um, have a great day.